Today we're kicking off our seventh season here at Dave and Ed's Super Auto Event here at the Canfield Fairgrounds in Canfield, Ohio. It's a swap meet time, man. All winter long, if you've been looking for parts, this is the place to find them. Parts and new, new cars, used cars, you got it here. Hi, I'm Rick Guerrero for Armstrong Street Scene. Let's go inside, check this place out. With me I have Dave Errett, uh, one of the guys from Dave and Ed's Super Auto Events here at the Canfield Fairgrounds here in Canfield, Ohio. Hi Dave. How are you today? We got a great weekend. Uh, finally. Yeah, yeah. No mud. Boy, when it rains around here, it's, this is great. Sun's out. And... Oh, yeah, I'm loving it. This mm -hmm. is actually the best day we've had since I've been home. Mm -hmm. Oh, but... S so, Dave, how long have you guys been doing this out here? Uh, we have been in business since for 30 years, and we've been doing this since 1993 here at Canfield. How big of an event is this? Um, I'd, I'd have to say it's the biggest one in the state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, we've got, uh, right now we're using every bit of fenced-in area that the fairgrounds has. And that's 125 acres. Wow. So, um, so we're talking how many vendors, approximately? Um, somewhere between 2,500 and 3,000. Wow. That's, this is a whole weekend event. Starts on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And we do this, what, three times a year? Three times a year. May, July, and September. Mm -hmm. Which one's the big one? The biggest. The spring is always the biggest. Yeah. Hi, Ed. We never interviewed you before. We had Dave on there a couple years ago when we were here. And uh, what a great day, huh? Beautiful day. Beautiful weather. Mm -hmm. A lot of vendors, a lot of people. Right. That's what makes it. And, yeah. Gosh. And uh, you guys have been doing this now, what, 30 years? Yeah, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Anything big special, special today? We got the car corral going on. We got, there's no auction this year, I understand, right? That That's correct. Okay. And, uh, there's going to be a car show tomorrow. So, so like you have this event three times a year. So, is there a car show on every Sunday? Every Sunday, yes. Mm -hmm. This is what a swap meet's all about. Here we got a 1950 Fargo, a Canadian Fargo made by Dodge. You ever seen one of these before?
Walking through the swap meet, we ran into Tom Collier here. Where are you from, Tom? Uh, Shaw's of Akron. Okay. Uniontown. Uniontown? Yeah. Uniontown, Ohio. There's Uniontown, Pennsylvania. I know. <laughs> what do you got going on here? Stuff. Uh -huh. Old stuff. Old stuff. Old How stuff. old is this stuff? They probably used these in the 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. We got one motor six. tester here. What that's for uh, generators and uh, regulators to rebuild them. Okay. And that's a sun uh, diagnostic machine. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a distributor machine to uh, set distributors and change the dwell and advance and do whatever you want with a distributor. These are probably out of what era? Uh, 50s, yeah. They still used them up into the 60s, late early 70s when they, uh, those are six volt though. Mm -hmm. Uh, when they uh, did away with distributors in the 70s and went to electronic ignition, that kind of killed that. Now, race car guys still use them because mm -hmm. they can change the dwell and the vacuum advance and whatever. High, high tech stuff. High back tech stuff. Yeah. And let's move over here. Oh, what do we got back here? That's a Firestone uh, battery test center, probably uh -huh. out of the late 30s. Wow. Uh, cabinet opens up. You. Test the load on batteries and charge batteries. Like I say, that's probably late 30s. It's uh -huh. all six volt. Uh, Firestone Service Center would have had that. Looks like something out of a sci-fi movie or something. I call huh? my Frank my Frankenstein <laughs> machine. Yeah, yeah. It looks like. And this here is what a motor and that, ignition. That system. would have actually been the same as the Sun machine, uh -huh. but earlier. That's probably in the 20s. Mm -hmm. That's uh, in the 20s for yeah. Model P's and all that stuff. Yeah, right? that that's old. Mm -hmm. now, that's older than I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> still around. It's still around. It makes a good display in a, in a garage or yeah, somebody really setting nice up a gas like station. Yeah. yeah, that's what you'd use it for. Let's move over here. We got some uh, body tools here. Show us how this one works here. Uh, same thing as a pick hammer to pick dents out, uh -huh. but this is called a bullseye. Okay. You center over the dent and just kind of work it out. Work the, work the dent work out. Work the dent out in a door panel or a fender or whatever. This is how they used to do it back used then. Used to do it. Uh -huh. yeah. For many, many years, too. Many years. Yeah. Here we These go. These are Model T parts. Okay. Uh, just a variety of Model T stuff. Uh huh. And uh, most of the Model T guys are going, so you don't sell much of that. But right. I bring it out anyway. Mm hmm. Just so someone like you can talk about it. That's right. It's really neat. I love it. I love it. Thank What's you. Up? What we got here? A wheel balancer. Wheel balancer, yeah. Uh -huh. I used to use one of those when I worked in the garage. Well, you can have another back, one. Back in the 70s. You can have another one. Uh -huh. what, look for the bubble on there. Look, it's a bubble balancer, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty neat. Pretty someone neat. says you're half a bubble off, you can <laughs> check it. <yeah. laughs> Here we go, we got the world's fastest Murray garden tractor. How fast do you want to cut your grass? This thing goes 100 plus miles an hour. <laughs> Hello, Armstrong Street Scene, can I help you? <laughs> I got Ty Tullis with me from Columbiana. How's yes, it going? Good, how you doing? Walk by this uh, this vendor here and he's got tons and tons of tires. Uh, it takes a lot to, to put this out here, huh? Yeah, it took me about five hours to get them all out. Uh, I gotta be good. 
a good workout, huh? And, and we've been bringing tire loads in uh -huh. every day. What kind of tires you sell here? Uh, Mastercraft, Cooper, Goodyear, uh, Victo Runs, Do Runs, uh, pretty much any any tire you're looking for. We have 14,000 tires in our warehouse. Wow. And uh, if we don't have them here, we'll get them here mm -hmm. for you. Tell me something about Cooper tires. That, uh, that's a pretty good tire. Co Cooper tires, an American-made made company. Mm -hmm. uh, tires are American-made. Uh, they make Cooper also makes Mastercraft, and uh, they make Star Fires. We carry we're Mastercraft uh, and Cooper dealer. Mm -hmm. So uh, looking for an American-made tire. This is the place. That, to that, come. That's your brand, yes, sir. What size you got here? Really from, uh, we, uh, we got 14s, 15s, 16, 17s, 18s, and 20s. And 20s, all the way 14s up to 20s. And, and trailer tires. I had to get this from my neighbor's dog. My shrubs are half dead from a uh, male dog. <laughs> We're at Grandma Lamana's Stromboli's, and with me I have Debbie Logan. Hi, Deb. Hi, how are you? What do we got going on here? Um, some really delicious strombolis. We have five different flavors here today, but we do have six. Our number one seller is an original, um, but most of the men here at this event, they like uh, the super. But then, of course, you have your uh, men that are a little conscientious about their health and whatnot, so we have a really good veggie that has broccoli, spinach, and cheddar cheese. What's in the super? Uh, super has... Um, Pepperoni, sausage, red and green sweet peppers. Oh, that's my that's my favorite one. Yeah, oh, yeah you kind of need like a, a, a drip cloth when you eat it because it's so... Oh, that good, sounds you know? good and healthy. Yeah, those fall off the bottom. But we do have one that a lot of the kids like too, and that's roni, uh -huh. roni and cheese. So. Is this Stromboli's? Anything else? Um, No. We sell so many of them, we can't really... We aren't able to bring other things here with us. Sixty-six Chevy Impala or sixteen-five with a kid on it, baby. Look at this. If you want to get into vintage racing, how about this one? A 1963 Sprint car. This thing looks like it just hauls, boy. Here we go, 1989 Bluebird bus. Nice party mobile, Harley Davidson, decked out in the Harley Davidson decor.
You're watching Armstrong Street Scene. Today we're at the uh, Buckeye Restoration here in Cairnsville, Ohio, and with me I have Nate Miller. How you doing there, Rick? Good to Welcome. see you again. Yes, yep. very nice, nice to see you. Nice cold day outside yes. today, right? Hey, Nate, you've been on this show since the beginning, mm -hmm. since season one, and we really never talked to you about what you do or how you started, where you were, and, and all that. Let's, let's do that today. What I can do is... Um, I worked for Lincoln Electric, the welding company, for 10 years mm -hmm. um, after I graduated from Mountain Union College. And restored Mustangs at night. Well, from there I started Buckeye Restoration in 2005. Um, we continue to grow and getting bigger and bigger. And in 2011, I started a company called Thoroughbred International, which developed Mustang body shells, uh, 65 fastback, and the coming 65 convertible this spring. Um, we also are in development and will sell through Dennis Carpenter Industries, the 66 to 76 Bronco tub. Which um, we do have a prototype, um, which I might show you later. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. But um, yeah, so we have an aftermarket body shell program we have going. Where we're standing right now is um, in Thoroughbred International, um, the international business line. We import uh, parts from Taiwan um, and containers full, and we build uh, full floor pan assemblies, which is right here for a 65 to 68 Mustang. Mm -hmm. um, what so this you does do this is, all yourself? Yeah, yep, and it's all <laughs> fixture welded with fixtures. Mm -hmm. What you see over there, that blue stuff's a fixture. Um, build the floor. It sets it to worth in this factory specifications of uh, where it belongs. So if you're doing a replacement on a Mustang that's rotted out, you can do it much quicker. Mm -hmm. You can do one big piece versus multiple small pieces. How about we go, let's go look at some mm -hmm. of these pieces, how you do it over here. Okay, what we have here, Rick, is the fixture that sets the floor pan up. We use factory assembly points with pins to align everything up. Um, there's eight points on a Mustang floor um, that where the pins come through and it sets it at the correct angles, correct dimensions, um, so it's level and square. Um, so basically, you X your car out before you cut the floor out, you put this in, your restoration, rust mill repair is that much quicker. Mm -hmm. Um, and like this fixture here we have on the floor is for the convertible, this one. We also have fixtures that create the front ends for Mustangs. So um, the convertible and the hardtop are different? Then? Yep, they're different. The floor well, you got more structure in uh, there? More structure in the convertible. You have inner rockers and you also have a reinforcement pan for the seat okay. riser. Okay, So you basically, you basically work on Mustangs. So Correct. What, 60? 65 to 73. That's 65. our specialty. Okay, that's your specialty. We do do Camaros, and like I said, we got the Bronco going now. Mm -hmm. um, How about Cougars? We can do a Cougar, too. Okay, the same, <laughs> same as a Mustang. Same thing, that's yeah, right. same, same thing. Same four yeah. pan, I'm same everything. Fan. I'm a Cougar fan, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you get your Cougar Eliminator. Uh -huh. All right, what we have here, um, is the industry first. We unveiled this at uh, the SEMA show in 2013. We were the first manufacturer to introduce the 65 fastback reproduction body. Um, unlike the other manufacturers out there that makes these body shells, ours are dead nuts on. Mm -hmm. So They're, you do everything yourself here? Correct. Wow. Yep. It's all engineered in the United States. There's no second guessing yourself with um, a Taiwan engineered um, mm -hmm. body. This is all engineered in the States and we're very proud of it. So when this thing is done, how is it titled? Um, we get you an MSO, so basically you get a title as a, a new car. It's a replacement part. So it'll so, get it like, say, 2015, right, 2016. Right, but it's also a replacement part, too. And okay. every state's different on mm -hmm. how you transfer VIN numbers. Some states are easy, some states are difficult. Mm -hmm. um, Ohio is one of the easier states. Um, Tennessee and, and uh, Maine are the easiest ones. But um, you just have to get inspected by the highway patrol because your re replacement part, it's just a big replacement part. Mm -hmm. So, so if someone comes in here and orders one of these, can you update it like, oh, yeah. like the rest we of them? We built one like... for the Zima show and I'll uh -huh. make sure I get you the pictures of that. Okay. Like you can put power windows in oh, it, yeah. you can put the air conditioning in it and just all yep. the updated stuff, updated all disc stuff. brakes and everything. All brand new suspension, so it's yeah. like a brand new 2015 car. Wow, so you got the old style look. The new look. The, the wow. Yep. That's nice. That's really nice. Unbelievable. With me, I have Jim Brooker from uh, 
Monroe Falls, Ohio, in his 1936 Graham supercharged Graham at that. It's, it's a supercharger model. Uh, a supercharger uh, model, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they originally had superchargers on it. Oh, they did? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. Graham was one of the first cars that had superchargers. Uh-huh. It was a, a six-cylinder supercharged. A six-cylinder supercharger, yeah. wow. Okay. I was thinking about the, who had the first, the Duesenbergs or something? I'm not really sure. Back then, yeah. yeah. Then uh, where'd you find this at? I found down in Columbus. Uh-huh. Uh, at a good guys car show about five years ago. Mm -hmm. I had a, I got a 37 gram and I thought, hmm, I better have a 36 too. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I bought it to add my collection. These are kind of odd. You don't see them. I've, I've seen them in magazines and everything, but I've never really seen one in person like this. You know? Yeah, there's very few around. Uh -huh. And Graham just made Graham. There was no, uh, there was no like sister car to it, a brother no, car to it. No, just Grahams till uh -huh. I think it was 1942. They started made, making trucks for the war. Mm -hmm. And then they never really rebounded uh -huh. the cars after that. So what made you get? What made you uh, hooked on? Uh, got you hooked on the Graham? I had a friend who was started building a, the 37, mm -hmm. and he had a stroke. And then I ended up buying the car and taking it from the frame up. Mm -hmm. and redid the whole thing on the 37. I just kind of liked them, and so I ended up buying another one. <laughs> you find parts for it? like I know you got the, what you got 350 Chevy in yeah, there. Yeah, 350, 350. How about the body parts? Can you find body parts? parts are hard to find. Uh -huh. They're very, you know, I and my 37, the grill was all messed up and I had yeah. to hand make a grill for it. I was going to say, that's a heck of a grill on there. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's, you just can't find the parts for the mm -hmm. different grams. They're just pretty much non-existent, and if you do find them, they're really pricey. Uh -huh. American-made car? It's American-made car, yeah. Mm -hmm. Were these uh, originally horns? Those are original horns, yeah. They work? Uh, not, no, not now. now okay, they got, I see that. They got, got the turn signals in them now. So. Got a street rod of that, and here we are at the car corral here at the Canfield Fairgrounds. What are you asking for? I'm asking 27.5 uh -huh. Ford, you know, or best offer. Best offer, you know, okay. Any serious bidders yet? Not yet, not yet. You know, just one of them things. All right. You know. I like this one, a 1929 Roadster. It's just the driver, it's got some nicks and scratches on it, but beautiful. Hey, can you imagine going down the road with your arm hanging out the window and this thing on a nice sunny day? On the complete opposite side of the spectrum here, from that uh, Roadster, we got a 1931 Ford Original. What a beauty, this would be nice. Nice to have going down the road. With me here at the Car Corral, we got Gary McEwen, McEwen from Grafton, Ohio, with the Seuss Mobile. Right. Why is it called the Seuss Mobile? Well, the, the guy that built it, his name, last name was Seuss, mm -hmm. and his kids always called it the Seuss Mobile. Mm -hmm. And that's where it came about, the Seuss Mobile. This looks like something like a 19, uh, early 1900s car. Well, when he started on it, uh -huh. he, he had a picture of a 1903 Oldsmobile on the mm -hmm. uh, garage wall. And he just started building off of it. It's similar to it, but it's not not exact. It's all Harley powered 45 oh, servo yeah, car. Flat, flathead. Yeah. Flathead is it a servo car? car. Servo car. Okay. But the motor actually came out of a uh, a box. 
Mm -hmm. It came out of the Armory Surplus store. Oh, so this was a brand new, a brand new motor then. Yeah, it's brand, brand new motor, and it had a brand new uh, speedometer. Mm -hmm. It's out of a '56 uh, Harley, mm -hmm. and he put it on there, and uh, whatever miles is on the speedometer is what's on the motor. It's got 2,200. 2,200 miles on the motor. Yeah, and it's got tiller on it and everything. I yeah. just like the old ones. It's got How's this tiller? thing to drive? It's it's pretty nice. You gotta have a smooth road though, because yeah. uh, you get on a bumpy road and you might be running down and trying to chase it down. <laughs> it needs to put shocks on it, but I don't want to change nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a fun little car. How, how fast can you get it? Oh, on a good day. If you ain't running off a cliff, 25 mile an hour. Oh, that's it? Yeah, it's a freight car, but yeah. it is. Yeah, okay, because you think of but that I engine, got, you can yeah. probably get a lot faster than that. Well, if you change the gear ratio, you can get 50 out of it, okay. but I, I, don't do, I don't think I want to run 50 in mm -hmm. it. I was going to ask you if you drove it here from uh, Grafton. Oh, no, no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have had to start two weeks ago to get here. Sounds fun. Uh, it's sounds a fun little car. Yeah, it sure looks like it. Uh, here, it's here. got a trunk to it. It's got the top to it, convertible top, and uh, it's a good island car. If somebody bought it and took it up to the islands mm -hmm. and run it, it'd be perfect for that. Good. You just about find anything here in the car oh, yeah. corral. Here's one for you. I'm guessing this is a 77. It's not marked. It's ghoulishly cool, though. It's old Hearst with craggers on it and everything. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Nineteen eighty one Corvette. I'm speechless. With me I have Jeff Stowe from Burton, Ohio in his 1940 Buick Coupe Convertible. How you doing there? Uh, I got a 40 Buick Convertible here for sale with the straight eight, all original. I'm the second owner on this car. The, the original owner owned it since uh, 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 till 2012. He passed away and I ended up getting it from his son. Uh, it's a, I got the original wheels and tires at home. It's got some California fine wires on it now. High dollar with coker tires. Uh, all new interior, new top. Uh, it's uh, got a new boot on it. Uh, I just had the transmission out, resealed it all. Uh, put a new clutch pressure plate in it. Put all, replaced all the brake hoses. And just a fine car. And at twenty nine thousand dollars, you ain't gonna find a better one. <laughs> How many miles on it? Uh, it's got it, it's showing thirty eight hundred. Uh, the speedometer cable was uh, destroyed, so I put a new speedometer cable on it. Uh, the odometer is working now. Uh, true mileage unknown. Unknown mileage. Yeah, but how's uh, it run for you? Pretty good. Oh, it's a good running car. It's a uh, lots of power. 
Don't even need to downshift going up the hills. Uh, what, a straight six. Straight eight. Straight eight. You got a straight eight. Eight cylinder in line. Yeah, it's a 200, 248 cubic inch motor. Still got the original six volt system in it. Brand new six volt battery there by Interstate. Uh, just a just a nice solid car. Uh, original paint and everything? No, it's been repainted once in 1958. Same color though, yeah, it's color original color. it's original color. And, uh, I walk by and I said, no, I look great in this car. You know that. But yeah, I think anybody looked good in this car. Even yeah. even I look good in this car. Uh, except in my neighborhood, the neighbors all turn their head the other way. Uh, have you ever done any research on it? Like how many of these have they made? Uh, there was actually 1,246 of these made. Yeah, this this year car, this style, there was 1,246 of these made. Uh, there wasn't. There's not a whole bunch of these cars out on the road, and surely there's. Hardly none left by now. Right, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, so it's just a nice, straight, honest car and make somebody a nice cruiser. Let's start out season number seven at David Ed's Car Swap here at the Canfield Fairgrounds here in Canfield, Ohio. We've got a perfect day today, about 70 degrees. The vendors are out. We had a great time talking to people and looking at parts and cars and a little bit of everything. For Armstrong Street Scene, I'm Rick Carrera. I'll see you down the road.